everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to play with a new Donegal yarn with some of the most unique neps I have ever seen. The yarn I'm going to dye today is 84% superwash merino, 16% cotton acrylic neps. And since these neps are the same color as the bare yarn and cotton and acrylic can't really be dyed with acid dyes, they should remain white at when we dye the yarn however we dye it, which is the closest to white speckles I think that I will have ever been able to achieve. Now, you can achieve some white specks on yarn if you apply resist, especially if you tie up the yarn with thread or something really small to get really tiny light specks, but that's very labor intensive. And so these white neps I think could be really awesome. So I cannot wait to show you more about it in this first look. We can't see the neps because they're white and the yarn base is white. You can kind of see them in some of these areas. You can tell that they're there, but color wise they don't stand out. So we are going to dye this a nice deep color uh, and see how they pop. We are going to do a cool that approach because I want to see what happens a little bit over time. I want to see what happens when I first dunk these, what, this yarn with the white neps into our dye bath. I want to squeeze it out and really be able to be hands-on with it. Uh, I have plans for this base. I want to do more uh, variegated type colorways, but I want to see how it responds to a deep color. So therefore, we are going to dye a 1.5% depth of shade, which would be equivalent of 1.5 grams of dye per 100 grams of yarn using the color Forest Green from Dharma. I am picking a deeper color so that way we can see as much contrast as possible. In this plastic shoe box, I have added about 8 cups of water. And now we're going to add 150 milliliters of my forest green stock solution. This stock solution was a 1% stock, which means that there was one gram of dye dissolved in 100 milliliters of liquid. And it is a stock that I mixed up fairly recently. And you may notice that it is quite pigmented already. I pre-soaked the yarn for a couple of hours and just wrang it out. Uh, there is no acid in here yet, and so let's add in the yarn. So right now, uh, we are not going to see the white, uh, and that is because uh, the white neps are a fiber, they are a fabric, and they will soak in the liquid. That doesn't mean that the liquid will dye them though. So, if I squeeze it out, they are there. I see the lightness. I don't know if that is showing up on camera. Barely. You can barely see that they're lighter. But as the dye absorbs, and there's no acid in here yet, as the dye absorbs, we should, in theory, get more white. All right now, let's add some acid. I'm going to add one, two, three tablespoons of white vinegar. So it, I think the nuts are a white cotton, and cotton I have seen some staining before, but not dyeing. And so I'm moving this through. And then we will check. Some colors will start to strike to superwash yarn right away. Others don't. But I feel like we need to squeeze it out. And uh, the neps currently look light green to me. But they are showing up more. So they are, they don't look stark white. But they are present and lighter. Which is awesome. Since I squeeze part of this out, I want to redistribute this through this color. And we picked a deep color. 
Uh, some colors will strike a little bit faster. This will need a bit more time, um, probably overnight. And yeah, it's uh, what I'm curious to see is when I wash it, how white those neps will look. Uh, but now I am going to rinse off my hands. <laughs> then I am going to place a lid on this container, set it outside um, probably overnight, at least for the rest of the day, and then we'll check in back in on it. Okay, it's been about an hour and a half, and the water is only lukewarm, and there's still definitely some color in it, but if I squeeze out the liquid, we can see more of these white naps. Uh, and you can even see them from further away this time, whereas last time um, I did need to move closer. Now, they are not stark white, but again, they have not been rinsed, so they may pop more when it is done. But this is like the closest to reverse speckles that I think you can get. So anyway, I'm gonna pop this back outside for a bit longer. It is the next morning, uh, so not a full 24 hours, but just about all the color has absorbed to our yarn. And you can definitely see those light naps. I wonder if they'll pop more once we've rinsed and dried it, hopefully, because if the cotton did take some staining, cotton always looks a lot lighter when it dries. So I'm hoping that that is the same case for these naps. But now I wanna steam set it. I am going to steam set this yarn in a steamer basket on the stove top for 30 minutes. It has been 30 minutes. We are nice and steamy. I'm now gonna turn off the heat, let the yarn cool off, so then we can wash it. Let's wash this yarn. I am really, really excited to see it dry because I don't remember if I've mentioned it in this video or not, but cotton uh, can look more pigmented than when it's wet than when it's dry. So if it did take a little bit of a stain, I mean, it's already looking pretty light, but it's possible it might look even lighter once it has dried. I'm seeing the tiniest hint of color in, and I just used some dish soap, so that's not bad at all, given the beautiful pigmentation of this forest green. But it's nice that even now in the water you can see it, and that's looking really clear. So now I'm going to go take this yarn, put it through my spin dryer, and hang it up to dry. This is my first look at this yarn with white naps. But some of you may have seen some of this content before because I actually filmed this episode of Dye Pot Weekly in the middle of a celebration live stream. So please make sure that you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you never miss a stream or any other behind the scenes looks at how this content is created. But if you would like more behind the scenes looks at episodes of Die Pot Weekly, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon because at certain levels every month there's a behind the scenes live stream while I am filming an episode of Die Pot Weekly so you can get a sense of what I'm doing as I am filming the video. And I think it's a lot of fun. So you can find links to my Patreon down in the video description. Here is our finished yarn with these white, well, close to white nips. And it is so pretty and fun. Ultimately, I do wish there was a little bit more contrast between the nips and the bare yarn, but this is the easiest, quote, reverse speckles that I have ever achieved. Whenever someone asks for reverse speckles, what they want are light colored speckles on a deep base. And this can be extremely hard to achieve because 
When it comes to dyeing yarn, you can add more color, but you can't take it away. And since the dyes sort of layer onto the fibers in a way, there's not like an opaque white pigment that you can apply to add white speckles on, like you might be able to do with paint on a canvas. The way I typically achieve reverse speckles is by using some kind of resist. And the most effective for getting teeny tiny little specks is to actually use thread to tie a few strands of yarn at a time. So then when you dye it, the dye can't penetrate in those areas and you get little itty bitty specks. Unfortunately, that is a fairly labor intensive process. A lot of times I go for larger reverse splotches by using zip ties because it's really easy to add them and remove them. Whereas tying yarn with thread or just acrylic yarn takes a while and also takes a while to remove. So anyway, these white naps are just instantly there. So are they white? They're white-ish. It's almost sort of like a dirty, maybe dirty green. The cotton can't be dyed with acid dyes, but it can be stained a bit. So I'm not sure if these neps are a little bit lighter or a little bit deeper than they were before I dyed them, but the contrast is not the same as it would have been if they were a pure white. There is also some heathering to the fiber itself. I'm not sure if you can really tell uh, in there just because of the cotton and acrylic fibers that run through the whole strand, which is very, very pretty. I have already dyed another colorway on this yarn base and the white neps are beautiful, but I did notice with pumping up the depth of shade and using deeper colors, this contrast still is good just not quite what I was hoping for. I think I was hoping for more contrast than there really is, but I imagine that this will knit up really, really beautifully. Someone did ask me about the nuts and if there's like a texture feel to them. I think that the yarn feels really smooth and I think that I sort of notice if I know what I'm looking for when I feel them, but just like with a lot of other tweed yarn, it doesn't feel bumpy. They are soft, they are fiber, so because it's like, it's not like a high twist lump in there, so it would be, I think, really, really soft on socks or similar. What other kinds of techniques should I try on this white neck base? So far, I've tried two different things that are dark, saturated colors, but I could try something that is less saturated to see how that contrast would be as well. And I'm just really, really curious to explore this more. One project I do know that I would really like to do is to do some side-by-side -side depth of shade comparison. So this yarn was at a one and a half percent depth of shade, which was one and a half grams of dye per 100 grams of yarn. But what would happen if we tried to also dye, say, a skein of Knit Pick Stroll that doesn't have that cotton acrylic in there, and we dye that with the exact same amount of dye? Would we see one that feels darker than the other, or will the color feel the same on both? Basically, I'm curious how much that heathering that we see makes a difference in the overall colorway. But I am very excited to hear what other types of dyeing experiments or projects you would like to see me do with this base. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and please don't forget to subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I release new videos at least twice a week, and you don't want to miss any of it. If you love the yarn I dye and want to bring some home, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop, which is filled with hand dyed yarn that I have dyed in my videos. So as you're working with it, you can go back and rewatch exactly how I dyed it and have a little more connection to that fun skein of yarn. There will be links to everything down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.